<clears throat> well, we have international news to share with you. Stefan Diggs has been traded. Sal Capaccio, it's his birthday. And we're giving you an emergency episode of It's Always Game Day in Buffalo. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Matt Bove at the tropical paradise of Grand Island. Sal Capaccio in the tropical paradise of Australia. What have the last few hours for you been like? We'll talk plenty about Stefan Diggs. What was it like? Because you, of course, were asleep through the entire thing. And then you wake up. Like, how many texts? How many tweets? How did you find out? Yeah. Walk me through all of that. All right. So, first of all, hopefully, can I don't have my normal setup because this is an emergency pod. I didn't bring my microphone. My, yeah. I think the, 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 the audio should be good. Hopefully, everything's good for everybody that can hear everything. Yeah. You say it's the tropical paradise. It's a little overcast today. We've had some great sun and great heat like the last few days, but it's a little more, maybe might be a little rainy today. Now, thank you very much. Yes, it is my birthday here. It's not there. By the time people hear this or watch this, it will be. So thank you very much. 51 today and feeling great. Um, Listen, I went back. We had a great day on Wednesday, just going around the city, walking around. We did the, actually not the city, the, um, we did this thing called, uh, Point Lookout, North Point Lookout, I think it's called. But it's overlooking. It's, it's on the beach. It's just long hike you could take. But imagine it's a, it's a Pacific Ocean, right? So it's the same thing you'd see in California, Oregon, where you go on these long hikes right down the ocean. I'm sure you've seen it in you know other places. But here, it was just pretty phenomenal to look at. But also, there was this big beach we were at. And it's all for me getting to say it was a long day. It was a hot day, but it was a great day. It was very hot. Get back at night. Time clocks, body clocks still aren't working like great. So I went to bed like around 10, maybe that, maybe 10 o'clock and Matt slept through. I turned my ringer off intentionally because I'm like, people in the United States are so different in time than me. I don't want to be getting texts that people don't know I'm here and I'm getting woken up in the morning. Mm-hmm. Well, sure enough, my wife gets up before me. She comes in at about 6 a.m. and says, hey, the Bills traded Stefan Diggs. Immediately I thought, is this April Fool's? No, it's April 4th. It's not April Fool's. Are, you're serious? She said, yeah. She said, everybody's everybody's talking about it. So I sprung out of bed and I realized I'm 12 hours. I'm sorry, I'm 14 hours ahead of you. I thought, what time did it break? What time did it break your, your time? 10.56. 10.56 in the morning. So that means it was 12.56 a.m. here. A.m. And I had already been to bed. So, I mean, this was sitting there for six hours before I knew because I was dead tired and didn't have my ringer on. I looked I at my phone. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Finish your, I'm sorry. I, I looked at my phone. Off. I don't know the number of texts, but all it was, was unread, unread every, I was just scrolling. I'm like, Oh my God. And I'm like, so now, and a lot of them were media from around the country wanting to yeah. know my thoughts and bring me on. Hey, can you come out to Chicago and Portland ESPN radio and all this stuff? Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, hey. and I, I just, I tried to respond to everybody and it was already late. They I'm sure they already got somebody I'm like, Hey, I'm really sorry. I'm just waking up. And as I'm doing this, I'm watching Brandon Bean. I'm listening to you and our, our colleagues inside the Bills media room. I'm doing that over the Bills social channels. And I'm trying to process everything as I'm getting with all these people who are texting me, friends, colleagues, and media, and then also listen to Brandon Bean and also kind of digest it. It was just kind of me a lot. It was like getting, getting punched really quick and hit by a truck in the morning. I couldn't believe it. I was, have you seen my tweet? about so, so first off you probably didn't because you got a million things going on did you see the you sure tweet from stefan diggs that kind of sparked all of the no. conversation okay okay somebody robert told me griffin there was III, i went back and looked i didn't see a tweet but anyway okay so robert griffin the third posted a video basically talking about was stefan diggs essential to josh allen and his success somebody commented basically like saying stefan diggs helped josh allen but Stefan Diggs is not essential to Josh Allen as the player. He's still elite. Well, Diggs responded last night. You sure question mark just that. So of Mm. course, everybody's talking about that this morning because it was such a topic this morning. I posted, I wouldn't read too much into it. It's the same thing. Every off season Diggs is still the bills wide receiver. One in Buffalo is still the best place for him to produce like a top tier talent. I posted that tweet six minutes before the Buffalo Bills traded Stefan Dix. You want wow. to talk about bad timing? I yes. posted that tweet, and then six minutes later, Adam Schefter broke it. So I've been getting cooked online today, which understandably so. Bad tweet, old takes exposed, all that stuff. Yeah, but- so you 
You, yeah, it's just whatever. It's like, I, I got to totally own it. I did not think that the Bills were going to trade Stefan Diggs because of the dead cap situation. But I think that's a kind of natural way of getting us into the conversation. I was stunned when I found out, but I've also had the entire day to process it. You just found out a couple hours ago. So what are your initial reactions to this trade? So on your on your first note of what you just said about getting cooked online, of course, right? You yeah, Matt, yeah of course. how many months, how many months have we all been saying they can't do it? The dead cap hit, the dead cap hit. We all said have said this. Then especially uh-huh. when his con- when his salary was guaranteed on March 17th, 18 and a half million dollars guaranteed. It, they even made more so. Now, there were times where I went on the radio and Bulldog and Chope would attest to this because they've kind of said, Oh, interesting. I would say something like, Look, they can do it. But I don't think anybody really believes that they would want to do something like that. Like it wouldn't make, of course they can. And they have yeah. taken on a lot of dead cap hit, but $31 million for a player not on your team seems a whole heck of a lot more than Brandon Bean's ever been. And it's, I think I read Spot Trek. It's one of the top 10, top five, six ever dead cap hits number for one. Any player. Number one at wide receiver. I think, yeah, number, number one, one at wide receiver. receiver. You know what? But, but like Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, they had yeah. more quarterbacks, but you're right, mm-hmm. number one wide receiver. So, I, I was just a surprise for that very reason. When I saw the return, and I initially did not see the Bills had given up a couple other draft picks, late pet picks, you know. But when I saw the second, I'm like, wow, like I didn't think they'd get that either. Like, if you're going to do it, uh-huh. this is – look, at my initial reaction is this, that I don't think Brandon Bean wanted to do this. I think that everything added up over the last few years, and yes, the cryptic tweets and – if you want to call it drama or just the maintenance of everything that goes along with Stefan Diggs probably became to the point where, look, we love this player. We do not want to trade him, but if you knock our socks off and we can do it, like we can help our team going forward for the next several years because we're trying to win a Super Bowl in Josh Allen's window, then we'll consider it. And I think it ultimately probably came down to that where they got a, a deal here, a second round pick and probably for a 31 year old receiver, Matt, who was on who tailed off last year, I think that's a really, really good price to get because if you go forward with him, you're not going to get that at any time in the future, probably. And they felt okay, we could do this. Now, I also think you have to have another plan in mind of what you're trying to do here. There's got to be more to this. There, and it doesn't have to be a trade tomorrow, but there's got to be more about how they envision the wide. They're not making this trade thinking, let's see what happens at wide receiver. They're not making no. this trade. Let's see what happens over the next two drafts. To me, they have a plan going forward and they're trying to stick with that plan on how they've envisioned it. And this is part of it. Yeah. A lot of layers to this. So Brandon Bean, I was at the Brandon Bean press conference. Brandon Bean can't say this. This is my read on the situation. This is just my opinion. Reading between the lines, I think they were over it. I think that they were fed up with the antics. I think they were fed up with the drama. And I also think that the production that they thought they were going to get wasn't going to be worth the headache. And I kept thinking back to that Bill Belichick thing of it's better to move on from a player a year too early than a year too late. And I think the Bills thought if we move on from Stefan Diggs now, we got to eat all of the salary cap, but we're going to clear up a bunch of space moving forward and we're getting a second round pick in return. Immediately to me, the second round pick is a moving is a chip that they can use to try and move up in a draft to get a player or to combine it with a bunch of other people or even use it to just go out and get a player. So I very much agree with you. I think that there is a plan in place. I don't necessarily know what that is yet, but I would be stunned, even more stunned that they traded Stefan Diggs if they don't use a premium asset on a wide receiver in the draft and if they don't go out and get another higher end talent wise player in free agency or in another draft that they can make. It could be a Brandon Ayuk. It could be a wide receiver that we're not talking about. It could be a Cortland Sutton. It could be whatever it is. And then in addition, a wide receiver in the draft. Like I don't think there's any chance they roll into next season with Curtis Samuel as their number one wide receiver. Yeah, that's right. They're not they're not going to do that. He's not their number one wide receiver. And I don't think he's been no. brought on to be their number one wide receiver. Uh-uh. Let me first explain and backtrack for everyone who's wondering about the cap situation and why we both said we thought this was too much. Stefan Diggs already had a $28 million cap figure for the Bills this year. On the team, playing $28 million against the salary cap. By trading him, they actually have to push even more money this year because of bonuses that have to get accounted for. And now him not being on the team is still counting $31 million against their salary cap. That's $31 million. They cannot spend on any other player because that money is counting for Stefan Diggs, who's not on the team. 
if they had waited till after June 1st, they actually could have only counted about 22 million and then 9 million next year. They said, let's do it all now. So mm-hmm. this move to me really, and Brandon talked about this, correct me if I'm wrong at the press conference, you were there, mm-hmm. how this really opens up flexibility for next year. And a lot of the moves they've made, Matt, have always all pointed to me towards opening up stuff for next year, opening up stuff. It doesn't mean they're not mm-hmm. trying to win this year, but I think they're giving themselves a lot more capability and flexibility. Now that brings in, in, in into 2025 and beyond, that brings in this, this draft pick. I, I, I've been saying for months, I think the Bills move up for a wide receiver. I think now, I think they may move up even higher than I thought they could. Here's why. Mm-hmm. You get a second round pick next year. It makes it a lot easier to part with your first next year. Yeah. Let's say you're on the clock, right? If, you, if, if a team's on the clock at five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it is. Remember, Julio Jones trade. They went from 27 to six, the Falcons. Mm-hmm. Um, Pat Mahomes, Bills, 2017 trade. Chiefs, they went from 28 to 10. The Chiefs, like mm-hmm. it's possible, and if you don't, and if you have an extra second, it makes it way easier to say, "I can deal with parting with my first. I think that has to be on the table. An extra second that could be a really high second because it's the Minnesota draft pick. So the Minnesota pick, who knows what they're doing? If they go out and they draft a quarterback, right. or if they have a rookie, right. you don't know what that's going to be. That could be a mid thirties or an early forties pick. And if the bills are what we think they're going to be, they should still probably be picking in the fifties or, you know, somewhere in that range. So for me, the question is, is it enough to move your one this year, your one next year and your second next year, or maybe even your second this year, whatever it is, probably, and something else to go up and get one of those top guys. So there's that option. And then there's the smaller move up to go get, a Brian Thomas or to go get one of those guys who's kind of like the next tier. I just think that they do have a plan and I don't think Bean finalizes this deal without kind of having the framework in his mind of what he wants to do. I I just think that somebody called into GR today, actually, as I was driving home and they said they were relieved. They were relieved that this was all done and that it was over because it has been such a conversation for so many years. And I get that. That's kind of the sense for a lot of people too. They're, they're just kind of ready to turn the page and start this thing over again. Yeah, I agree with that. And again, I don't want to take away. I, I want to address a couple of things too, that were tweeted at me. Like, because you know, we, we've all been taking us, ah, you guys all said this, you said that you said he wasn't a cancer. I don't think he was a cancer in the locker room. In fact, I think he was a really good teammate. I, I I've talked to a lot of people who think that Stefan Diggs is a great teammate, but there was always something that went on that the team had to kind of talk about deal with mm-hmm. whether you want to call it a distraction or not that doesn't mean he's a locker room cancer it doesn't mean he's a bad teammate it just means there's always something that they're dealing with and now you think back over the last few months it's not just him it's how this wide receiver room has been massively moved and shaped and shifted no Gabe Davis anymore or they go out and they I don't I don't think KJ Hamler necessarily is gonna but they go out and they try and turn over that stone they have they bring in Mac Hollins Curtis Samuel think about the difference in the wide receiver room now versus what it was just a couple of months ago. It seems like to me, they went into this offseason and said, we're going to have to make a massive move in that room. And safety, by the way, right? This is <laughs> truly, we talked about this. We talked about this a month and a half ago, Matt, even more. Remember how we said like the new iteration of the Bills? Like now they've, they've had this one window. Now they're going to start with a new window. This is really, I think, the defining a totally new Bills squad versus what we've seen in the last seven years. So not only are they clearing cap in the future, they're getting significantly younger. And I think that this is by design. Josh Allen is the exception. Josh Allen is going to be your ride or die for your quarterback for the next five, six, seven years, whatever it is. He's going to be the guy that you need to get you to where you're trying to go. But look at what they've done at corner. Look at what they've done at safety. Look what they've done at wide receiver. Look what they've done all across the board. Like the new core of this team are guys like Josh Allen, probably James Cook. Well, I don't even know if it's James Cook, but Dalton Kincaid, Taron Johnson, Dion Dalton. Like these are the guys that are now kind of the next wave. You have some carryover from Josh, from Dion, from guys like that, but they are getting younger at all of these positions because I think that was an emphasis for them. And they're still trying to open up salary cap. I think the Stefan Diggs thing is interesting because you can be shocked and stunned that it happened and also understand why they did it. I don't think that those need to be different. I I think some people are like, well, how can you be shocked? And then make the argument that this makes sense. I'm shocked that they did it. I think they're a worse team right now than they were, but I also do think that they have a plan 
and also think that this could help them long term. So you know, there's a huge range of emotions here, but I get it. And just from sitting in the room, 15 feet away from Brandon Bean, I got the to- the tone to me sounded like they do have an idea what they're trying to do. I didn't yeah. get the sense that he was like decimated or dep- like some of the people on social media who have been like, this doesn't make me more confident or I don't really know what they're trying to do. I didn't get that sense at all. I got the sense of like, guys, pump the brakes. It's April. Nobody's going to be talking about us like this if we trade up and get Malik neighbors and then go sign some other guy right. at free agency. Like nobody's going to be really panicking. So Let me ask you this. Certainly it makes the next few weeks very interesting though. For all I know, he could have been traded while I'm in Australia, but I don't think so. Do you think T. Higgins is at all on the table? No, because then T. Higgins would have to get a contract. Right. I agree with that. I don't think T. Higgins is necessarily. It's weird because this kind of crushes the narrative that an AFC team wouldn't trade a star player to another AFC team that's a contender. Because I never thought if the Bills traded Stefan Diggs, they would be trading him to the Houston Texans, a team that's right. really good with the young quarterback in the AFC. I thought they would be sending him to like, hey, guess what, Steph? You're an Arizona Cardinal. Congratulations. Go enjoy right. your time with whoever is Kyler Murray. Go do that thing. But clearly, if the second was the best thing that they could get, they don't ultimately care. No, I don't think T, T- Higgins makes sense. Brandon Ayuk is fascinating to me. Because it feels like you would just be doing the Stefan Diggs trade all over again. But I don't know. I don't know if they would do that. Would you trade your first this year for Brandon Ayuk? I don't think so. I'd rather I'd rather use the first on a young guy. I think the contract point is the point here. They they have mm-hmm. made would it, it wouldn't make sense to suddenly put all that money back into wide receiver on the books that you just cleared over the last they didn't they didn't resign Gabe. Gabe got 13 million. They mm-hmm. trade Stefan to clear next year like the 20 plus million they're going to clear on him but they're taking on the dead cap this year but you go get an iuk or a t higgins you have to pay them it's going to count and i just feel like that's kind of counterproductive and the different message and what you've been trying to do basically right that what makes sense to get a rookie wide receiver here i don't disagree i i don't although i'm although i don't think rookie wide receiver that's a dice i've i've said it i'll say it again matt you go in next year if a rookie is your number one, woo baby. Okay, like you better you better pray he's really really darn good. If you're drafting someone, I don't think you can go in banking on a as a as a rookie as your number one. I think you got to go out and do something else about a guy who we don't maybe know is available, and then you try and get that person like trying to trade for somebody. Maybe it's a situation where you don't really have a one. You have like a one A and a one B or a two A and a two B, and you're hoping your primary pass catcher is Dalton Kincaid for the short term, and then this person eventually becomes the new number one. I don't like. Let's say to me the most realistic option that they could draft is Brian Thomas, right? Like it's not one of the top three guys. It would still require a trade up, but it seems like it's attainable. It seems like it makes sense. And the type of player would fit Buffalo. Here's one for you. Brian Thomas had 17 total touchdowns last year, 17 receiving touchdowns. All of the bills wide receivers combined had 19. I know we're talking about the NFL and college football, but 17 touchdowns in college football is pretty freaking impressive. So to me, It's like, what if you have Brian Thomas? Then I think what you need to do is you need to go out and add another guy to be here for a year or two and then eventually let him ultimately take over. The only way I think a rookie is your number one next year is if you really take a big swing. Like if you get Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison or Odunze, like that's the exception. I still just think, though, that might be a little bit too rich for the Bills' blood. How about from the Texans' side? This is a big deal for them. They do get a 31-year-old receiver. I think Stig will be 31 this year, right, during the season. He'll be 31 um, in November. Yep. And, you know, they get him to pair with C.J. Stroud and that dynamic offense they already have. Um, They're trying to win with with their rookie quarterback. Their, I'm sorry, their quarterback in his rookie contract. They're trying to win now, and good for them. That's exactly mm-hmm. how they should play it. This makes sense for them to make a move mm-hmm. like this. And, by the way, it's starting to rain. I'm actually getting a little bit wet. If you hear that and see that, that's probably – that's what you might even get it on a little bit on the camera there. This is this the new laptop? We don't want to ruin the new laptop. No, it's all good. I'm good. I'm covered here, but I'm seeing making a little mist. I think for the Texans, it is a smart move. I think it's what, like you said, it's what the Bills did. It is a little bit risky though, because if you don't hit in your window, then you are hurting yourself long term. 
It's exactly what the Bills yeah. did. And they came close, but they didn't get there. The thing, though, for me that's interesting is I think Stefan Diggs' best year that he will have left in his career is probably this year. So they're getting him in his prime for, I think, one more year. They need to go and compete and contend this year, take advantage of a weak division. They're doing that. You've got a young quarterback on a rookie contract. Got to take advantage of that as well. The thing, though, that's interesting to me about the Houston Texans is, like, you – couldn't you have just drafted one, right? I think they wanted a veteran receiver for the room like the Bills wanted. It's a lot of the parallels. Josh's second yeah. year is CJ Stroud's second year. Well, don't Let's, say they don't have they don't have a first round pick though, right? Uh they made the they deal tra- with uh, No, they do. They, they have tra- a first round pick. Right? Um I don't think they do. With, uh no, maybe maybe that's pro- that that's right. I have to go back and look to make sure. Um but either way, I, I think that's part of what this is. I think that they are trying to build a team where D'Amico Ryans and Nick Casario say, look, we need a veteran receiver who's going to come in here and help this group and move them along. And look, for all the step on digs drama we've talked about, I will tell you too, the other thing that over the last, even more, even recently talking with people is how much step on digs really helped the bills in that room when he got there. And for the few years, he's so competitive. He's such a leader. He really is. And again, uh-huh. yeah, there's a lot of stuff you deal with that kind of comes with it. But he was great in that regard and really lifted everybody. And I think the Texans are hoping for the same thing. Now, the other question is, do we see Buffalo, Houston, week one? Is that a week yeah. one yeah. matchup? Yeah, I, I could totally see it. Also, they have two second round picks, by the way. They don't have a first, so they have two second round picks. So, you know, conceivably, there would have been somebody available in the second round that would have been good for them. I It would be really, really spicy. But at the same time, it would play as spicy. And I, I, for me, that like screams Monday Night Football. That game just like screams right. Monday Night Football to me. And I don't think they would start the season on Monday Night Football back to back years. We'll talk to Mike North about this when we talk to him. Yes. I, ju- I just, yes. I, I, I don't know. I feel like this year the Bills get a little bit of a dud starter because they've been on such a heater with these games yeah. the last couple of years, right? Like, I don't know. Are they really going to start in prime time three years in a row? You could make the argument that they should, but I don't know. Just I feel like save that game. That game could be played at any right. point in the season, and it would be a good game. I, but it's, it's going to be really interesting. Now they have Jacksonville on the schedule with obviously mm-hmm. Gabe and Mitch Morris. They have Houston on the schedule with obviously Stefan. There's a lot of uh-huh. a lot of the, those storylines you know, that get baked in here. So um, anything else that I missed since I've been here, and we can kind of try to wrap up here the last several days um no the- nothing that you, nothing that you missed i i do think that the bills have a lot of work to do but i also think it's important to know like they know that i think they realize that they've got a lot of things to figure out so brandon bean said after a move like this eating the new, the three million dollars more they have about three million dollars in salary cap space so they don't have a ton of room right now. That's to account for the players that they're going to have to replace and the draft and all that stuff. So it's not like they could just go out and sign a big free agent right now. What I think we're going to see is if they're aggressive in the draft, I think we see that. And then when they get the added $10 million from the Tredavious White move in the summer in June, then I think we could see them go out and add a veteran. I, I think like I know he's not available now, but I think like DeAndre Hopkins was signed at that point last season. Maybe we're talking about something very similar to a type of move that they could make. I'm surprised, but as the day has gone on, the surprise has worn off a little bit. And I don't think that's just from a time standpoint. I think it's just from a starting to logically think about all of this and hear Brandon Bean talk. I, I kind of get why they did it. Okay. So Brandon Bean said today, because of the added extra 3 million from the trade, they now have about, I think he said in three the threes. Or $4 million. In the th- okay. He's like in the threes. Let's, let's talk and retalk about how we interpret that to be said. Okay. Because we yes. have this debate. To me, that means right now, just right now, they have three, let's say $4 million in cap space. Right now, they have $4 million mm-hmm. in cap space. On June 1st, they're going to have $14 million in cap space. Also, around June 1st or so, they're going to have to sign their draft picks, which are going to cost probably about $4 million. That's how I interpret mm-hmm. it. Yeah, that's how I interpret it after hearing how he said it today as well. But he also said there's things we can do to clear up a little bit more. Okay. And he also said so he said that and he also said, like, be assured we're gonna turn over every stone to try yes. and find guys that we're going to roll in, you know, he's like, We're gonna roll out a damn good football team in September. 
And the reason they're going to roll out a damn good football team in September is because Josh Allen's their quarterback. The national narrative from so many people today of like the Bills window, it's the same thing, but just elevated to a whole new level after they cut Trey, after they cut Mike, yep. or not cut Micah, but Jordan and Mitch Morris and all these people. It's like, oh my God, the Bills are going to stink. More people who are saying, hey, the Bills are going to stink. You know who doesn't think they're going to stink? The odds makers in Vegas. And if you've ever been to Vegas, look at those casinos and those hotels. They don't lose money very what do they often. Have to trade? Did you look? They were the same as they went from like plus 550 to plus 750. They're still the favorites to win the division. And they right. have the same odds as the Houston Texans, who are now going to be the sexy pick for everybody in the AFC. I think they have yeah. like the fourth best odds in the AFC to win the Super Bowl. I think it's like Chiefs, Ravens, Texans, Bills. Or do you something remember, like that. Do you remember? Um, I've also, the other thing I've been getting is Bengals fans. Going back to that quote from being a couple of years ago, he said, I don't want to have to suck bad enough to get Jamar Chase. And yeah. Bengals fans are like dunking on the Bills for that today. I'm like, why? They're not going to uh -huh. suck, first of all. And if they did have to, they did get a guy high in the draft. It's not because they're drafting there. It's because they're going to trade up to get it. Yeah. I think that this is the little bit of Brandon said today that this is not them taking a step back. This is not them resetting. This is not anything like that. But I think they're sneakily doing that. Like, I think they still want to be competitive, but they also want to free things up so they can be more aggressive in the future instead of shopping at all the bargain stores like they've had to for the last couple off seasons. Besides Doesn't the Von Miller move. 17 a little bit? No, because they still have an elite quarterback and they still have. Right. But I mean, like, I mean. They said when they said when they traded Sammy and Ron Darby on the same day, and they're like, I don't know why everybody says we're tanking. We're actually trying to help ourselves win, and we think we can do that. Like it's the same messaging. Uh huh. Yeah. I just maybe a little bit. I just think that if you just look at the Stefan Diggs money is twenty seven million dollars that they clear up next year. The Von Miller money that they clear up next year. You're looking at just like those two players clearing up about thirty five to forty million dollars with two players. That they no longer will have. I mean, assuming. But I mean, if Von Miller assuming, comes out and has yeah. 14 sacks this year, they'll probably keep him for another year. But right. I mean, I think it's a safe assumption that if they move on from those two guys, well, they've already moved on from one. If they move on from the other, like they're going to have a lot more wiggle room without having to make all of these extensions to Taron Johnson and to Deion Duck. I think the Bills are going to be fine. I think this season for the Bills looks a little bit like last season, where it is not a hey, they're fighting for the one seed. It's you know, we're fighting and kind of clawing our way until the end and they still win the division. I think the division is going to be a lot tougher this year because I think the Jets are legit or I think the Jets could be legit if um, if Rodgers stays healthy. But, I mean, I watched Josh Allen take a team with John Brown and Cole Beasley as their wide receivers to the playoffs. So I'm not really counting him out just because he doesn't have Stephon Diggs. That's well said. All right, well, I'll be back uh... – I'll be back like to after the eclipse. I'm coming back after the eclipse. I'm not going to see it. Yeah. Can so. you see it there? Is there, does it, is it in uh, the path? We're not in the side of the world where that's going to happen. Yeah. Well, I, you're kind of far. So I guess that, that makes sense. Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank Happy you. birthday, Appreciate sir. That. And how about that's very cool tonight. We're going to actually meet up with um, Australian Bills fans here in Brisbane, been uh, gathering and doing a meetup. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably record some Stefan Diggs reaction from down under. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see that. I won't see it. It's going to be similar to like what you experienced with Diggs. I won't see it until tomorrow, which is already yes. happening where you are right now. So it's kind of crazy, all of these time zones. But have fun tonight, which for us is tomorrow. We cranked out. I mean, this week we had Mark Shalareth on the pod. Then we had the Buffalo Plus crew on the pod. Now we've got an emergency podcast. So maybe we'll take a little bit of time off until you're back. Are you Unless playing a tie off or taking a tie off right now, by the way? No, taking it off. I was, I was at, oh, you were on TV. Right, okay. literally came right from, it's funny. I look like I'm a, a white shirt and a black tie. I look like either I just came from a funeral or I'm a server at a nice restaurant. That's kind of the look <laughs> I've got going on right now. So, all right. Well, ironically, the place we're going tonight is called wing house. I'll report on how good the wings are here in Brisbane when we go there. Well, thank you for doing this. I know you're on vacation, but uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for watching, everybody. For Sal Capaccio in Brisbane, Australia, I'm Matt Bove on Grand Island. We'll talk to you guys soon. And thanks to Mike Rabier, our producer, as always. Yes.